Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. Today, we're here with my 2023 NBA season way too early NBA team tier list. That was a lot to say. Basically, I'm just going to go ahead and rank each team in these five tiers that I've made. The contenders, which are the teams that I think have a good chance to win it all. Borderline contenders, which are kind of on the cusp. You know, you could consider them a contender, but I think they're kind of just on that fringe. Playoff locks, which are teams that, barring a big injury, I think will probably be in the playoffs. Your fringe playoff teams, these are like your lower seeded play-in teams most likely, or teams that are right on the cusp. And then last, we have teams that are going for victor, teams that are either tanking or I just don't think will be great this season. So those are your tiers. I won't spend too long on this intro. Leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy. Tell me which tier your favorite team should be in in the comments below. Let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with the Philadelphia 76ers. By the way, these teams are just in random order. The Sixers, I made a video about a couple days ago, and I think they are contenders. I think they could not only win the East, but win the whole thing. They're incredible. I think that James Harden's in for a bounce back year, and Bede is going to be an MVP candidate every year that he's healthy. Tyrese Maxey is one of the most electric young guards in the league. They picked up P.J. Tucker, who I thought was a great pickup. De'Anthony Melton's going to help off the bench. Tobias Harris, I think, gets a little underrated because of his big contract. They're really good. I think they're going to have a phenomenal year and could honestly win win the whole thing. For the Wizards, I have them in fringe playoffs. Uh, brought back Bradley Beal on a massive contract. It's no secret that I think they should have let him walk or go for a sign-in trade. I just don't see this Wizards team becoming a contending team with Bradley Beal on the roster. I think that contract especially kind of puts them in a stranglehold, but they'll be a decent team. They've got him got Chris Stapps, made the trade for Will Barton, a Rui Hachimura is fun. You've got Denny, um, Daniel Gafford was pretty solid this past season. They're a decent squad. They'll have some success. They'll probably be a play-in team, but I don't know if I could really call them a playoff lock. The East is just really good. I think the Wizards are kind of on the cusp of missing out. Next, we have the Atlanta Hawks, who I'm also going to put in fringe playoffs. And you might think, you know, they added DeJounte Murray. They've got Trey Young. This is going to be a really good team. I also think DeAndre Hunter could have a big season. John Collins. It's a really good squad. The problem is the conference is ridiculous. Now, I do think the Hawks, if I had to pick now, will end up making the playoffs. But how good the East is, I can't really say I have them as a lock. They were just so bad last season. And I don't think they made any uh, huge moves outside of DeJounte Murray. Now, he does help with their perimeter defense, but I've been kind of outspoken about the fact that I don't love the fit with him and Trey Young. I think they'll be a really fun backcourt, but ultimately to see if that fit works towards success, we'll have to see. I think they probably will make the playoffs, but I don't have them as a lock. Cavaliers, same situation. I think that with their young talent, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Darius Garland, Karis LeVert, Colin Sexton will probably come back on the qualifying offer, I would guess. They're going to be really, really good. I think that the problem is, like I said again, the Eastern Conference is really tough. Uh, when you could have to maybe face this Hawks team in a play-in game, if you're the Cavaliers, that is really, really hard to do. Um, we saw this past season, Trae Young taking over and pushing the Hawks through the play-in to the playoffs. I think that they're going to be really solid. It might just be a little too early in a really deep conference for the Cavs. I think they definitely could make the playoffs, but they're still kind of on that fringe. With the Pistons, I think they're going for Victor. They're not going to necessarily be tanking, but they're just still super young. Cade is going to hopefully take a little bit of a jump. I like Jaden Ivey, like, like Jalen Duran. Uh, this would have been a different story maybe if they were able to go and use that max contract slot that they had on like a DeAndre Ayton or a Miles Bridges before the situation about him came out. Um, that could have maybe helped propel them a little bit up towards fringe playoffs. But I think, you know, they held on to that money. I thought they had a great offseason. They're continuing to build and get better. They're still few years away but eventually they will make it back but for right now they're going for victor then we've got the indiana pacers i think they might be the worst team in the conference uh this upcoming season they're gonna be really really bad uh they've got tyrus halliburton who's super fun chris duarte benedict matherin um buddy healed uh you have miles turner as well although those two last guys could get moved before the season they'll be fun but they're gonna be pretty bad they're going to lose a lot of games, which is great for them because they're in the rebuild. The Bucs are, of course, a contender. They've got Giannis. They're one year removed from a championship. And if Chris Middleton doesn't get hurt in this past year's playoffs, who knows? Maybe they're representing the East again in the finals against the Golden State Warriors. When healthy, they are one of the best teams in basketball. They've got the best player in basketball in Giannis. I don't need to tell you why the Bucs are contenders. 
And then you've got the Toronto Raptors. To me, they're playoff locks. Uh, once again, this is barring any major injuries, something that I can't predict. Uh, they've got Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, two all-stars. Pascal was an all-NBA player. Uh, they brought in Otto Porter Jr., who I like his fit a good bit. Drafted Christian Coloco, who's a fun big man for them, which they desperately need. Of course, they've got Gary Trent Jr. Scotty Barnes was incredible this past season. In his rookie year, OG Ananobi could maybe make a jump. They are, in my opinion, a lock to make the playoffs. If they have some huge development from young guys, maybe they could push in the borderline contender, but they just don't have that superstar caliber guy guy to put them in a tier like that then we've got the dallas mavericks who i'm kind of iffy on part of me wants to put them in borderline contender just because they have luka Doncic. uh they just they just had a great run to the western conference finals they picked up christian wood i think they're going to be really really good but i can't decide if I want them in playoff lock or borderline contender. So for right now, I'm going to put them in playoff lock. I might move them up before the end of this video. I am worried about how they're going to do with Jalen Brunson being gone, but it's Luka. They were really, really good this past season. Got a lot of great 3 and D guys. I still do think that Christian Wood's more of a four. I would like, or I guess they do have um, JaVale McGee as well. So, you know, he's kind of a center, but I would have loved to see them go out and get a guy like a Miles Turner. Didn't end up happening, or at least not yet. Maybe they make that move before the season ends. But for right now, I'll go with playoff lock. Maybe I'll change that. The Denver Nuggets. I'm going to say they're a contender. I've been outspoken that I think the Denver Nuggets are going to be incredible this upcoming season. Last time we saw them fully healthy was after the trade deadline when they picked up Aaron Gordon and they won eight straight games. They look like the best team in the league with the line above uh, Jamal Murray, Will Barton, who will now be contagious called Will Pope, Michael Porter Jr., Nikola Jokic, Aaron Gordon. That five-man squad was absolutely ridiculous now they've got guys like bones highland to come off the bench um alongside some other guys as well they picked up like i said contavious caldwell pope who i think is a really solid 3d guy ish smith is a solid guard to come off the bench i think the nuggets are gonna be really really good led by the two-time mvp and Jokic. they will be a contender the grizzlies for me are the first borderline contending team if their young guys continue to make leaps, Jaw gets better, Desmond Bain gets better, some of those other young guys, I could see them maybe pushing up to contender, but for right now, I still think they're too young, I think they're still a tier below these other teams in the West uh, that you'll see in a little bit, but I do think that they could be borderline contenders this season. The Minnesota Timberwolves, to be honest, part of me wants to put them as borderline contender. That's how much I believe in what they did this offseason. But I'm going to slow down. I'm going to say they're a playoff lock. But if they do end up being one of the top teams in the conference, just know that you heard it here first. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs going for Victor. They're going to be the worst team in the NBA, in my opinion. Kellen Johnson's going to have a great season. Same with guys like Devin Vassell. I think that Josh Primo could have a pretty good year getting more minutes. Uh, still one of the youngest players in the league. I wouldn't be surprised if Jakob Pertl's moved at some point before the season starts. They're tanking. They are just absolutely tanking. Then you've got the Utah Jazz who... They haven't traded Donovan Mitchell yet, but without Rudy Gobert, they're going to be really, really bad. Um, they did pick up a lot of decent role players, but not having Gobert really is going to... It's going to show how much they relied on him defensively. They're going to absolutely let... Every team is going to have the chance to put up 150 on them on any given night. The only reason they might not is because of Jared Vanderbilt <laughs> pretty much every single night. So... I think that eventually they're going to trade Donovan Mitchell probably to the New York Knicks. Maybe apparently like the Wizards are in on it. Um, so we'll see how, what happens with that. But I do think that they're going to be going for Victor. Then you've got the Los Angeles Clippers who are a contender. They are one of the early favorites in my opinion to win the whole thing. They're really, really good. Uh, probably the deepest team in the league. Uh, you've got Norman Powell, John Wall now coming into the fold of things alongside Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, uh, Zubak off the bench. You've got like Marcus Morris, Luke Kennard, Reggie Jackson. It's an incredible team. Amir Coffey as well. Brandon Boston. They're just really is no holes on this roster other than like maybe a backup big, which there's still time to pick up a backup big if they want to either in free agency or at the trade deadline. You know, maybe they could turn some of that depth into a backup big. They've got a lot of wing players. They could convert those to a rim protecting center. Regardless, though, this team is going to be a contender as well as the Phoenix Suns. Some people I know are going to hold up on what happened to them in the second round. I think that was kind of just a fluke thing. I think that was one of the most shocking things I've ever seen on a basketball court. I don't think it happens again. 
I think that the Phoenix Suns, uh, you know, they've had these grand plans of Kevin Durant, which I think is dead now because DeAndre Ayton ended up coming back. I thought, you know, K KD could be a Sun because the whole DeAndre Ayton to the net signing trade. But with that not happening, I think that the Suns are maybe not as good as they could have been, but they're still going to be really, really good. They went to the finals a year ago or two years ago now, and they just set their franchise record for wins. They're going to be a contender. The Trailblazers are going to be a fringe playoff team in my mind. I think they'll end up in the play-in. Uh, Damian Lillard, he wasn't healthy last year, maybe the year off. Uh, for the most part, we'll give him the ability to come back bigger and better this upcoming season. They just signed Simons and Nurkic to big deals. Simons could have a breakout year. They did pick up Jeremy Grant, who I think is going to be solid for them. They've got Josh Hart. They're a decent team. They're just not as good as some of these other teams in the West that are ridiculous. Then you've got the Sacramento Kings, who... I'm going to go ahead and put them in fringe playoffs. Um, I think that they'll probably be like an 11 or a 12 seed. You know, maybe Keegan Murray really is the truth like we've seen him be in the summer league and they make a leap into the playoffs. But I do think that they are going to end up missing out on it. I just think the West is too good. With the New York Knicks, I'm going to put them in fringe playoffs as well. They're not outright tanking. They'll be a fine team picking up Jalen Brunson. Maybe RJ Barrett takes a leap. Julius Randle bounces back at least a little bit. There's no way he's as bad as he was last season. Mitchell Robinson, they brought him back. They're going to be a fine team. I just don't think, once again, they'll be able to make the playoffs. Um, or, you know, maybe they make it in through the play-in. But at best, I think they will be a play-in team towards like the 9-10 spot. Then you've got the Pelicans, who I have as a playoff lock. Uh, I, this is another team that I think could shock the world and end up becoming a contender this season. CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, Jonas Valanciunas, Herb Jones. It's going to be a ridiculous squad, as well as some guys off the bench like Trey Murphy, who I think could have a really, really good season for them. Jose Alvarado just became Chris Paul's arch nemesis. It's a great squad. I think that Zion Williamson could have an MVP caliber season. In fact, you're going to be seeing a video on that coming up pretty soon which I'm really excited to show y'all. The Pelicans are going to be ridiculous. Barring a major injury, I think they'll be playoff locks. The Hornets, I'm going to say are going for Victor. Losing Miles Bridges is a huge huge loss for them. Uh, I'm not saying it's one that they shouldn't have made because, you know, the whole situation with Miles Bridges, um, it made sense that they ended up letting him go, but ultimately it is going to hurt them from a basketball standpoint. He was their leading scorer. And I think that the hole that his scoring leaves is really going to be felt on this team. They still didn't pick up an established center as much as I like Mark Williams. It's going to hurt them a lot this upcoming season. Houston Rockets also going for Victor, you know, another team that's young, rebuilding, still on the come up, but ultimately it's just too early. The Miami Heat, I'm going to put in borderline contender. It feels wrong when they were a win away this past year from making the finals, but so many teams around them got better, like the Bucks and the Sixers, who I have up in the contender tier, but the Heat didn't do much to get better. They brought back Victor Oladipo. They ended up losing out in PJ Tucker to the 76ers, their main competition or one of their main competitions in that conference. It's a huge loss. He was huge for them this past year. Kyle Lowry had a really rough season where he looked not washed, but he looked not nearly the player he was in Toronto. If that trajectory continues, Jimmy Butler doesn't get more help. They're going to slowly and quickly fall down the list out of maybe borderline contender to just play off lock. But you know, they were just a win away. I trust in Eric Spolstra, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo. Maybe Kyle Lowry bounces back. Tyler Hero is really good and he's young. He could keep getting better. So I will give them the borderline contender spot, but it's not looking great for the Heat right now. Chicago Bulls are a playoff lock, in my opinion. They need Lonzo to get healthy, but assuming he does come back healthy, him, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Vucevic, they'll be in the playoffs. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, I'm going to have his borderline contender just because of all the drama surrounding things. Uh, j just on paper, you know, regardless of the KD or Kyrie stuff, Katie, Kyrie, Ben Simmons, uh, alongside the role players that they have, this is a team capable of winning a championship, in my opinion, or at least competing out in the Eastern Conference. However, with all the drama involved with Katie wanting to be out, I'm not going to put them up in the contender spot. I just can't do that. I do think Katie and or Kyrie gets traded before this upcoming season, so they're going to fall down into a team that's going for Victor, ultimately, despite not having draft picks. But I think that the Brooklyn Nets... If, you know, the roster stayed the way it was, which I don't think it will, would be a borderline contender. 
Thunder. We're going for Victor. I think we will be around like the 12-ish spot maybe in the Western Conference. We're better than a couple teams, but we're definitely worse than quite a few. The Golden State Warriors, of course, will be contenders. They just want it all. You know, they are only going to get better when the young guys improve. They did lose Gary Payton II, Otto Porter Jr., guys that are going to hurt ultimately, but they held on to Kevin Looney, which was a huge hold on to. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo, I think, will be really solid there. Kuminga and Moody, I think, will be ready to step up. Jordan Poole. They've got KD, not KD, Steph, Clay, and Draymond. They used to have KD, but not anymore. Uh, Steph, Clay, Draymond, Andrew Wiggins, who was just an all-star this past season. They're going to be a really good team. They just won it all. They'll be right back in the mix of things, as well as the Boston Celtics, who just went to the finals. Regardless of if they go for a KD trade or not, the Celtics are going to be right in the thick of things in the Eastern Conference. They went to the finals and only got better adding Gallinari and Malcolm Brogdon, two pieces that I like a lot for that team. The Lakers, I'm going to go with fringe playoffs. They've got LeBron James, they've got uh, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook did not end up as a good fit. They're trying to still trade him, but even if they don't, I don't think it'll be as bad as it was last season. I think that they'll gel a little bit better, even if the fit is still super awkward. They're not a contender by any means at this point, but you know, maybe they make the playoffs. And finally, the Magic are going for Victor Wembanyama. So that is my tier list of NBA teams at this point. Let me know what you think I got wrong, which team should be moved. Um, I was going to think about moving the Mavericks, but I think I'll leave them there in playoff locks for now. Um, they could be moved up to borderline contender. I'm just kind of worried about the whole Jalen Brunson situation. So I'll just leave it like this for right now. Let me know what you think of this in the comment section below. What I get right, what did I get wrong, especially with your favorite team. Educate me if you think I'm an idiot. I appreciate y'all watching. Please do a like and subscribe if you did enjoy. I'll see y'all later. Real one say it back.